Hello everyone, and welcome to another World Leader PvMB video. We are now in Helm's Deep, so new expansion. Audacity got raised again, now goes up to 19, still the same statistics at the end. Uh, we are now level 95s and all that stuff. And uh, truth be told, I'm actually surprised by some of the changes and what didn't change on the creeps, in addition to what did we did get. Uh, first off, our physical mitigations did not really move at all from... Riders of Rohan to Helm's Deep, which I was surprised by. I thought they would go down. Uh, the tactical mitigations did go down once again, which is hitting those classes that are really low on them even harder. I mean, Reavers are well below having 20% tactical mitigation base, so the Filers and all the other guys are you know, just as bad there. So w The tactical situation needs to get addressed. we we got to get base mitigations up again. But at least physical did not move. Uh, the really big thing that I was surprised by is that we now have double the corruption slots. So you get six trait slots for corruptions instead of just no wait that you get twelve. Tra so you get twelve trait slots for corruptions instead of just six like you used to have, which is huge. Uh, it also means that for the poor free players, uh, it, things are even worse just because now you have to shell out cash to unlock twelve corruption slots because you need every single one of those to be even close to competitive. Uh, here is my build on my war leader. With all these new slots, I, I've for the most part followed my previous philosophy, but now it's, it's like I can really build health, damage, and critical rating with no problems at all. Uh, the goal I went for was I, I went for maximum uh, crit percentage in melee. So once I hit 25% crit with a melee, which I think, it, well, you can see how many slots that took, that was when I stopped with that. And then I stacked on my health as usual, and then I loaded up damage. Um, I already had a pretty balanced damage build. I just slotted in more masteries, and that's what I run with. Uh, I'm still not a big fan of the crit protection. Uh, the mitigations, I was actually considering taking a couple, but once again, I feel with the War Leader, because War Leader is a healer, stack the damage and make up for not having mitigations by just healing harder. That's how I feel the War Leader can be played, and also because he just does have better mitigations than other guys from the bat. The other big thing is that I've gotten a lot more in the habit of using my uh, buff potions, particularly the Armor 1 and ev Evasion and such, and that really helps to deal with a lot of mitigation issues by itself. So when you've got that you know, uh, level rank 6 minimum required delving boost going, and you keep that up constantly, that's... A good chunk of extra mitigation right there, and then you've got other options with a, a high-ranked war leader. I can go point defense. I can throw down my banner of terror to lower incoming damage. I've got options available to me that make up for not having slotted in extra mitigations. So I feel like I haven't lost anything there. I'm not totally sure about some of the other classes yet. Still toying with the reaver, but that's where I'm at. Uh, anyway, these are a couple one v ones that I did have uh, fairly recently. And the only one of the ones I had before this were against a guardian that I ran to and, and some captains, which were just awful. Um, you know, Freeps got completely revamped in how their traits are done. They've got trait trees, which I've talked about that on my podcast. You can hear me rant about that over there if you really want to hear my opinions on that. And those first couple um, run-ins with Freeps really left a bad, sour taste in my mouth. I felt like... You know, the captains and guardians you know, were some of the better fights in Rohan and such, and now they're just uh, incredibly insane. There's no way to kill them at all. I, you have to have you know, like a huge group, a mob of monster players, to bring down a captain if they're yellow traded. That's just how powerful they are in terms of survival. But uh, then I, I did get the chance to fight a couple other classes, and things are not that way across the entire board. Uh, here, the first one is this warden, uh, Swift Poke. Uh, as you can see, I got tribe chat going, which I'm just gonna throw that right now. The white hand is I'm I'm getting to rebuild the my whole tribe right now, and uh, be in charge of that. Uh, this warden is actually red traded. Uh, he is built for bleeds, which wardens have very 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 damaging bleeds, as we're gonna see very quickly here. Um, I do go ahead and use my green potions to remove what bleeds can remove, but a lot of them are unpotable, which is something I, I'm not happy about. Is that a lot of the the Free People's classes now, especially the ones that really got a lot more uh, look at damage over time stuff, they got a lot of uncurable things that, that show up as the two blood drops up there. Um, Guardians get that, it has a little number to tell you what tier it's on. Uh, Wardens get it. it it's, it's annoying, because they're up there, they're, 
there's no real way to differentiate them without a mouse over, so you can't tell what one's ticking hard. And more importantly, you can't remove them. There's nothing you can do against them except wait it out. And that's you know kind of stupid, poor mechanics when it comes to damage over time stuff. There should always be you know something going on with the ability to remove it and stuff like that. It, the free peoples get you know classes that have skills devoted to removing various types of debuffs and bleeds and such. But what do we get? Nothing. But anyway, uh, I've gone into turtle mode, as you can see, and I'm managing to survive the damage he's outputting while fighting back effectively and uh, taking him down. The Wardens, uh, they're, at least when they're red-traded, they are not the self-heal monsters that they were in times past, even against uh, War Leader DPS. Um, also, another big thing is, you know, I'm rank 11, I finally have a bleed, so when I hit... Uh, black speech, it does put damage over time on there, and that really does help a lot with the turtle mode, because you can dot the, a target up and continue to put some damage out, and it makes a world of difference. It really does. Uh, here I do go ahead and do a double heal, and uh, their death sword hops in and finishes them off. Now, I feel like I would have won anyway in that fight, but you know, it didn't come to a, a, a nice conclusion. Uh, here I'm going up against Wolfram. I I really did not expect this fight to go the way it does. Uh, I honestly expected Wolfram to have a lot of damage ready, but he's actually yellow traded, so he's doing a lot of trap use. Which, you know, for the moment, I'm finally remembering, oh yeah, debuff banners. <laughs> and I decide, okay, I'm going to turtle this up, he's hitting me real hard. The war leader, unlike in you know some of the other previous expansion stuff versus the hunter, a war leader can turtle up and survive a hunter's direct DPS. Now, this does apply to a yellow traded hunter, not a necessarily a red or blue trait hunter. I have not had a chance to match myself against them. But the big difference about the yellow traded hunter is that he has one a lot of crowd control options available to him, but he's got a lot more self healing and survival skills just ready in terms of just being able to stop his enemy, slow him down, create distance, get away. As you can see here, uh, he's he's doing a, a good job of running around. He's trying to fight in the melee. Uh, I'm just putting some damage down on him, and he's getting his traps off. But I'm, I'm managing to stay to stay stabilized, I'll say. Um, you know, I've, I get low, and now I'm just waiting for my opportunity to double heal. I did go ahead and replace the command post with the point defense right there. And now I'm just gonna turtle up a little bit. He's uh, using. I'm not sure which skill that was. I forget the name of it. It's something they got back in Merkwood, honestly. Uh, but I think it's press onward. It gives them a power. It also restores health, depending on how they're traded. So it's one more tool that they have available to keep themselves in the fight. And now he's actually closing the melee range, because he needs to get into melee range to use some of his skills to get back health, uh, also to put down that particular trap, which that's something that with a yellow hunter is they actually need to dance back and forth between being in melee being at ranged uh, they don't have the the burst killing power the way that a red line hunter does not to say they can't do plenty of burst i mean he's he's had some great hits that he's put out but it's not to the extent that a, a pure dps range build hunter would be able to do but in exchange for that i'll say they get a very very good skill set of utility stuff. Uh, things to keep themselves alive, uh, things to harass their enemies, a lot of crowd control options, particularly the slows and the roots, which people... They, we don't deal with as many roots as, as much anymore. I guess uh, the lore masters just haven't been throwing cracked earth around the way they used to. It just seems that way to me. They're way more intent on using all their fire dots, and way more intent on throwing that sticky gourd every chance they have, uh, or their yellow line. That's, a, that's the other thing, is a they're using their other lines too, so they're doing super pet mastery and all that kind of stuff. And they're not just, you know, the crazy red line with cracked earth, sticky gourd, uh, the old combos that we were used to seeing. So the hunter really gets a, a lot more chance to shine as the, the root master if they want to build for it and you know, commit to that role. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm doing this is because, as you can see, this fight is actually stalemated. Uh, just because of the way this is, I don't have the firepower to consistently drop him, and some of that's probably just he's managing to get himself healed, and 
with potions in addition to his other stuff. Uh, press onward. Very, very short cooldown. That's uh, another big one. And I don't know if that's... That used to be in the blue traits was uh, all the press onward improvements. That might have been moved to yellow. I don't know. I don't play a hunter personally. I haven't had a chance to look at all the classes, changes to skills. I honestly haven't wanted to look at all their changes to skills because a lot of them have been very shenanigan-ish. But you know, however he's built himself, he has a very good press onward with a fairly short cooldown. Uh, he makes good use of agile rejoinder. I, pretty sure he's using the legacy on that one. And so he's just got a, a good tool set available to him that allows him to, to kite, stay at range, recover some of the morale, and I just don't have in my heal mode the the firepower to keep on consistently doing damage to eventually wear him down. And I can't get close enough to him consistently to be able to go brawler and really try to mess him up. Plus I don't have the ability to survive his sustained DPS in Brawler. So, it's uh, an interesting dichotomy. And while that's really annoying on Captains and Guardians, I find it refreshing on Hunters just because you don't see it that often. Uh, usually, it's a f you're forced into this crazy DPS race because, uh, especially the last couple expansions before Helm's Deep, there just wasn't any middle ground. It was either Hunters could blow through all your DPS, or they were just easy meat. And, you know, only the very, very best of the best hunters could even get out of that whole cycle, which Wolfram is not to be sneezed at. He's been out here in the Etmores a long, long time on his hunter. So he doesn't know what he's doing. And, you know, I applaud him for, you know, doing the yellow line and not the other one. And thank goodness Turbine's finally made it so that yellow line is viable truly viable. I mean, I'll say it was viable after the revisions towards the second half of, Mer of Mirkwood when they released, uh, what was that? Uh, Volume 3 and Free to Play, that was it. Uh, this new decoy thing is also a lot of fun here. It's going to explode in a little bit. And uh, it does stunning and all kinds of craziness. Just fun to see. Now, the one other thing that's really great about Helm's Deep, as you can see, power issues have started to come back, particularly for the free people. They now run out of power. Uh, it's not like it was at the end of Riders of Rohan, where power just disappeared as being an element of combat in player versus monster player. Now, power costs are back again. People run out, you will run dry on power. And I'm really happy they finally did that, because... The uh, no power, yeah, sure, okay, great. It, it it makes it simple and easy. You don't have to worry about something. It's all taken care of because you'll never have to worry about it. Uh, really boring gameplay, it, and especially for the war leader who, you know, there were classes you ran into towards those end, that end area where it was a sustainability fight, and your only real option would have been to run them out of power, but you couldn't because no one ran out of power. That said, monster players still are existing in that whole weird realm of we don't run out of power, particularly a turtle war leader, as you can see. Uh, this is not my standard build, though. I will say I am using the empowering trait instead of my typical when I'm out in the raid or just run into somebody out in the field uh, build. Uh, I do stop recording there and <laughs> give up, and he does eventually call it a draw. Uh, but yeah, empowering does give me some extra power generation. Uh, for this round, I do go against the champion. And uh, this symbol here, I'm going to mouse over some of my debuffs and stuff in just a second, try to figure out what it is. It apparently does not show up on your debuff bar, because I look for this thing and I cannot find it anywhere. Uh, if it does show up, someone please let me know, correct me, because uh, all I find is that devastated thing. Uh, maybe it's over there next to the, uh, the relic buff. Uh, I'm not sure, but whatever this thing is, I've heard a lot of stuff about it. It's like uh, apparently it's champions. That's when champions are able to heal themselves. Is when that thing's up. Uh, I really don't fully understand it. I treat it with caution right now because it's something I don't fully understand. So I'll try to keep them from being able to exploit it. Because whatever it is, I mean, let's be honest, it's a champion. Either it's something to keep him alive longer or something to help him kill faster. There's really 
no middle ground there. That's all champions do, is they swing their sword and kill stuff really quick, or they swing their sword and kill stuff not so quick while being really annoying so that it hits them because they're face tanking. And that's pretty much the, the end of it. Now, the, uh, the champion fight, very similar in some ways to to the hunter matchup in terms of these early stages where we're both you know, kind of stuck, matched one for one with each other. Uh, he does have... No, he did not eat food. That's actually going to be uh, a guardian fight that I had here. I did not even record with the guardian fight because I knew it would go nowhere. And guardians are a complete draw. I run him out of power, but the guardian just has so many ways to get power back and the, with the way cooldowns are that I'll run him out of power for the while, I'll start whittling down his health, he'll get his cooldowns, and then he'll be able to hit some more skills and stuff, and keep restoring his morale, restoring his power, and I just don't have the firepower to put him down, it just doesn't work. But that said, he cannot do anything to bring me down either. Uh, with this, uh, there, there is uh, elements of that going on, but unlike a, a guardian fight, or a captain fight these days, while a champion has some self-heal abilities, he doesn't have this huge skill set that on low cooldowns to just keep himself going the whole time. He, he does run out of morale. Uh, you can whittle him down. Another great thing about that is champions have to be in melee. So you can get away with being in R of Command, and you've got auto attacks and melee skills to fire off, and that's uh, a big part of being able to do damage to him. Like if for that Wolfram fight, if he was forced to stay in melee the whole time, yes, I would be able to whittle him down. But because he's a ranged class and he has ways to create distance, that's not what happens. And I do have to uh, start and stop the recording a couple times just because I start getting lag. Uh, I try to do it as quick as possible, but there are a couple of slight jumps, so my apologies for that. Uh, one thing to note is I do have only two of my buff potions. Uh, my evasion potion is the one that's missing, which would really make a lot more difference against the champion, because evading melee attacks is just you know, such a big plus. It really is. It's it's a lot of damage that you avoid, which means less damage that you have to heal, more time that you can stay on the offensive instead of having to drop back into commander stance. Uh, one thing I am trying to do during this fight is I'm trying to be careful to be a little bit more defensive and cautious while my banners are down and try to time it so I can get into brawler stance or at least just offensive attack mode when I get my banners planted freshly which there's only I think about 20 seconds of downtime because they're on like a one minute and uh, 20 no, I think it's a little more it's about a, a one minute duration with like a one minute 20 second one minute 30 second uh, cooldown for them so they lowered the cooldown again if I remember correctly but there's just not a lot of downtime between them. And that's really the big thing that's helping out the war leader against most classes right now is because you can keep that banner of terror down all the time with lead the charge, that puts a huge drain on what they're able to do. They, the champ can't hit as hard because it saps away uh, might, I believe, as well as physical mastery. And then it takes away from power generation. And because champions don't have fervor, they the stance has all disappeared from everybody. Um, I do run a champion, so I do know that, actually. Um, that took a quick look at the outpost right there. But because they don't have fervor stance anymore with the crazy power regeneration that used to be one of the hallmarks of champions, you can run them out of power. And it's amazing. And this is, the I think, the first time in the game where you could actually feasibly run champions out of power in a one-on-one -on -one fight with them in DPS mode. You know, he's, he's doing his fervor thing, and it just doesn't make a lick of difference because he still runs out. And the other thing is he spends a lot more time under the ominous presence of that Banner of Terror. And, hey, champions are melee class. You can pick where they're going to stand to fight you just by standing over there. They have to get up in your face to do damage. Now, right now I'm actually just going ahead and trying to put more damage on. I actually waited until I had my big cooldowns ready to go. So, you know, I've got my get a grip. I've got quitters never win waiting in the back rounds so that if I do run into trouble, you know, I can hit a, a big heal. Uh, for now, I've got to be a little bit more cautious, try to 
get the advantage because I've got those ominous red swords over my head again, and my banners aren't ready. But uh, there goes Banner of Terror, here goes, here's Banner of Horror, which means more firepower coming in. And now it's time to press for a kill. Now we'll have to watch out because he's going to have uh, Man Heal, the Strength and Morale, ready to go, and he will also have his Dire Need prepared. Uh, champions also have a new skill. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it restores a percentage of the morale every like three seconds for about a minute, which I've used that a few times on my low-level champion, and it's very effective, especially at higher ranks, because it is percentage-based, so I think he's going to hit that fairly soon here, and you'll see him go up quite a bit. Uh, I think he's also going to hit this Arak pretty soon, uh, just with an AoE, and cause himself some trouble. Uh, that actually, no, actually, that might be in the next fight. So there he's going. He's using a lot of his heals. Uh, yes, he did hit that ability. It's the uh, shielded face looking to the left oh, in a green background. A little helmeted face. Not shielded. That's the, the symbol for that particular cooldown. It's uh, about a five minute cooldown or so. Uh, but it's a strong way to heal back up. As you can see, he's just clicking back up at a very rapid pace because of it being percentage based and him having almost 20,000 morale in his pool. Uh, but it has worn off now, so back to grinding him down. And uh, I, th I believe he used a potion right there to get that big burst of power back. But he's already used Dire Need, if I'm not mistaken, so he's not going to be healing up you know, uh, 2k or so with a Dire Need heal with that power pool ready. I still have Get a Grip waiting in the background, even though I did use Quitters Never Win. And he's running pretty low on morale, so I'll just go ahead and try to finish him off. If I get in trouble, I'll just use Grip, and that should be plenty to get me to the end of this. You've got something healing him right there. I'm not sure what ability that is, actually. But. Uh, it's not going to be quite enough. I'm starting to get a few crits, and all I need is a couple more good hits, and he will drop. Back to 2k. And a good crit with Shield Bash finishes him off. Always try to remember to be polite to your down foes. Yeah, maybe not. It just depends on how, how you feel, but as a general rule, I prefer to be polite. Uh, now I do go ahead and give Swiftpoke a second round. Um, where did that second round with Swiftpoke go? Oh, no, I did not record that. I'm sorry. I did fight a second match with Swiftpoke. Apparently, I did not record it, which I thought I had. I do manage to defeat the Warden in that fight. Uh, he does have an Arak, an Arak get on him during the fight, but another Freep shows up and pulls it off of him, so it doesn't affect much. But I do manage to whittle him down and eventually kill him. Uh, the fight goes very similarly to that champion fight, actually. So, you know, there, there's options available. Uh, obviously, there are a couple classes that are very tough, and you just can't kill them because of the survival skills they've got right now. And there's a few more that I just haven't been tested against in this new version of the Etmores. I have not gone one-on-one -on -one with a runekeeper yet, although I suspect the results will leave me very upset and dead. Uh, I haven't tried fighting a lore master one-on-one -on -one yet, and I have not fought a red or blue traded hunter one-on-one, -on -one, although I'm sure I'll be able to get my chance of that fairly soon. But um, the Entmore is, is not completely bleak out there. Uh, group play is definitely the more prominent factor right now, but there still is room for soloing, even if it is a bit more restricted and constricted in terms of all the classes that are a good shot to go against. Uh, but, you know, the War Leader still has you know that, that special edge of, you know, I can go take on some of the tougher classes to drop out there, and just by virtue of being nice and tanky and sticking it out stubbornly, I can drop him. I'll, I'll kill a Warden just because I can survive his bleeds and out-heal him. And I'm glad that they've got it balanced out where, you know, 
you you can't just overwhelm the out, the healing output of a, a main healer, especially a ranked one, with one DPS class, because that makes for poor raid play. If you can just say, "All right, we'll just have all the hunters pick whatever you want and open fire, do your burn hot whatever," their healers can't stop it unless they throw a bubble. Thank goodness we're not dealing with that. Although audacity is a must. Anyway, that's all for this time. Good luck and have fun out there. Ugmog is out.